the previous two lectures I have introduced you to the idea of how to describe waves, how to write them mathematically and also how stationary waves arise and a general displacement of a vibrating string can be expressed in terms of the eigenfunctions and eigenfrequencies of that string. We want to develop a wave theory for particles and therefore those lectures were given. So, if you want to develop wave theory for particles, why should it be done? And it is done because a moving or a moving particle has waves associated with it and we want to describe this wave. What does it mean? Let us understand that. What it means is that if there is a particle which is moving, there is a associated wave. So, particle is moving independently, it has a wave associated which is known as matter wave or de Broglie. wave and it has a wavelength lambda which is given by h by p where h is the Planck's constant and p is the momentum of the particle. And this relationship which I am putting in a box is true the relationship lambda equals h over p is true both for non relativistic and relativistic particles. Let me explain what does that mean. If there is a particle of mass m moving with speed v, its momentum you know is given as m v. If the v is very large, the correct formula for p is m v over square root of 1 minus v square over c square. This is known as relativistic momentum. which for very small v goes over to the uh, non relativistic formula. This is non relativistic. formula. And what de Broglie relation sh says is that lambda will be given by h square root of 1 minus v square over c square over m v and goes to h over m v for small speeds. This is a proposal. This is cannot be derived, cannot be obtained from any other equation, but it is a fundamental equation. It is that particles have this uh, wave associated which is which is has a wavelength h by m v. So, anybody who says that we are deriving this result cannot be derived. The only way to establish this, so let me write this, the only way to establish this is to verify the formula experimentally. And if it comes out true experimentally, then you know it is a relationship which is true. So, I will describe in this lecture what experiments can be performed to check this relationship. But before that, I just want to give you some sort of a historical background as to how uh, de Broglie arrived at this, this relationship. And I am just giving it, it is not a derivation, it is just that how people work, how they think 
and propose something on the basis of the, when they are playing around with the equations, but the ultimate check is experiments. If this formula that de Broglie proposed was not true experimentally, it would have no meaning. So, let us just see for the interest, right. So, let me just write this historical background. What de Broglie said is, if there is a particle of mass m by Einstein relationship, it has energy m c square and by Planck's relationship, it has a some internal, let us write internal frequency nu, which is given by m c square over h. I am not deriving it, I am just describing to you some uh, historical background, historical the way historically de Broglie was playing with these formulas. And when the particle moves with speed v, its energy is given as m c square over square root of 1 minus v square over c square, that is the correct relativistic formula. And therefore, its new internal is going to be equal to m c square over h square root of 1 minus v square over c square. You see new internal has gone up a bit. On the other hand, when this is moving and a person is watching it from here, the internal clock, clock that had this frequency new internal slows down. due to time dilation and there is a different frequency nu which is observed from outside which is going to be equal to nu equals m c square square root of 1 minus v square over c square over h. This frequency has gone down because the time dilation outside person sees this clock running slow. So, for the same particle which is moving with speed v, we have two different frequencies. How do I reconcile the two? That was the dilemma that this person was facing. The way to reconcile the two frequencies new internal which is m c square over h square root of 1 minus v square over c square and new let us call it clock which is m c square square root of 1 minus v square over c square over h is to assume that the particle has a wave associated with it and the frequency nu internal equals m c square over h square root of 1 minus v square over c square and this wave is always in phase with new clock that I am assuming remains with the moving particle. Recall from previous two lectures that this phase is given by omega t minus x by v which is nothing but 2 pi nu t minus x over v. So, this wave is of frequency nu internal and therefore, the phase for the wave is going to be 2 pi nu internal times t minus x over v at the position position x at time t. 
So, I have this phase of the wave is equal to 2 pi nu internal t minus x over v. How about the phase of the clock? of frequency new clock. This clock is with the particle and the phase in time t is going to be new clock times t times 2 pi and what de Broglie demanded that these two be equal. These two phases are going to be equal. So, let us write the left hand side as 2 pi new internal t minus x nu internal divided by v and this we demand should be equal to 2 pi nu clock times t. 2 pi 2 pi cancels from the two sides and I get nu internal times t minus x v over nu internal can be written as lambda of these waves associated with the particle is equal to nu clock times t and I am going to replace this x by v t now because that is the speed of the particle. So, I am going to write nu internal t minus v t divided by lambda is equal to nu clock times t. You may wonder and you may feel at this point that maybe we cheated because this v out here which I am encircling by red encircling by red out here if I had put x equals v t probably I would have cancelled things but that is not true this v this v out here this v out here this v is actually v wave this v out here is v wave. So, even if I wrote this whole thing writing x equals v t right from the beginning there will be no problem because I will have 2 pi nu internal t minus v t divided by v wave is equal to 2 pi nu clock times t. So, that is not an issue and this t cancels and therefore, and 2 pi cancels. So, let us take new internal in. So, you get new internal times t minus v t and new internal divided by v wave is nothing but lambda wave is equal to new clock times t. t again cancels and you substitute for new internal which is nothing but m c square over h square root of 1 minus v square over c square minus v over lambda wave is equal to new clock which is m c square square root of 1 minus v square over c square over h. We shuffle things around and you get v over lambda wave is equal to m c square over h. 1 over square root of 1 minus v square over c square minus square root of 1 minus v square over c square and this gives you m v square over h square root of 1 minus v square over c square leading to lambda equals h over m v over square root of 1 minus v square over c square which is the de Broglie formula. I again emphasize that this is not a derivation. This is how de Broglie arrived at it. This could have been wrong completely unless verified experimentally. So, in fact, he was asked in his thesis defense, this was his thesis, how would you check this crazy proposal? And he said, you do diffraction experiments. And in that experiment, if you get the lambda to be the same as obtained by him, then it is true. So, the experiments that were available that time were x-ray diffraction
and this word diffraction is important because let me now say if there are waves associated with a particle, these waves can interfere. That is a very specific wave property that waves interfere. So, if, if you can show the interference, another form of which is diffraction of these associated waves, then we prove it. So, this was what is known as Davison. Dermer experiment and also Thomson's experiments. So, let me just tell you what happens in X-ray diffraction. Just give you the Bragg formula for it. Suppose there are two layers of a crystal. Crystal have these atoms which are regularly placed and suppose I have these two planes formed by this at a distance d and if x-rays come in and go out what you see at that certain angles theta from the plane of the surface of the crystal you see a lot of interference you see a lot of peaks at other angles nothing really happens. So, the way it was explained we are on x-ray diffraction the way it was explained was that these planes, planes formed by these atoms actually act like mirrors for x-rays. So, an x-ray coming in gets reflected from the top surface, gets reflected from the bottom surface and if the phase difference between the two reflected rays which is given by this path difference shown by curly bracket is integer multiple of lambda of these x-rays then we would see lot of x-rays reflected in that direction. So, let us see what is the corresponding formula if this distance is d and this angle is theta theta. So, the angle would be if I draw a perpendicular here this angle inside shown by pink is also going to be theta this is going to be theta. So, this curly bracket distance is going to be d sin theta and on this side also is going to be d sin theta. So, total path difference between the x-rays uh, reflected from the upper surface and the lower surface is 2 d sin theta and what Bragg suggested that if 2 d sin theta is equal to lambda or 2 lambda and so on in general n lambda integer multiple of the wavelength of the x-ray I am going to see a constructive interference and I am going to see x-ray is reflected at that angle. At any other angle you will not see that much of reflection. So, this is known as Bragg formula. So, one could do the same thing with electrons. What one would do in this case is take these crystals and instead of x-rays you let electrons come in and the associated waves will also be reflected from the top surface and the bottom surface and you should see peaks only at certain angles and those peaks will correspond to the constructive interference of the associated waves. So, if those waves really exist if I know d of this crystal I should see a strong reflection of 2 d sin theta equals lambda d Broglie which is h over p or 2 lambda de Broglie and so on and this was confirmed 
experimentally which established that lambda indeed is there, there is a wave associated and you see exactly x-ray like diffraction pattern even when you do electron diffraction from a crystal. This was done long ago in 1930s. Modern experiments are also there. For example, if you recall from your 12th grade, the wave nature of light was established by Young's double slit experiment. So, can I do a Young's double slit experiment for electrons also? So, can I prepare a double slit? Let electrons come in and see if I obtain a fringe pattern at the far end just like in Young's slit experiment it was done and nowadays it can be done because we can make slits which are small enough, we can create distance between them which are small enough using uh, the modern technology and this experiment has also been done and that confirms that the wavelength indeed is lambda de Broglie. Third experiment which was very interesting and was proposed way back is Dirac Kapitza experiment and in 1990s and after that these experiments have also been performed, it is required very high intensity light. So, the experiment is what Dirac and Kapitza said is that if x-rays can be diffracted by material that is a crystal and if I electrons really have wave nature then electrons can also be diffracted by standing wave of light. Because standing wave of light have this periodicity and this is like a light crystal from which I can diffract electrons and these experiments have also been performed. They had to wait till very high intensity lasers were invented that gave you intense enough light to diffract electrons. So, let me just tell you that also in a minute. So, if I have standing wave of light between say two mirrors, then the periodicity is lambda light divided by 2. So, this becomes like the D of the crystal and if I bring the electrons in and they diffract then I should have 2 d sin theta equals lambda electrons, 2 lambda light over 2 sin theta should be equal to lambda electron, this 2 cancels and I should be able to satisfy this equation when I see a lot of electrons being diffracted in a particular angle from this light crystal so to speak. Now, you see if you notice here the crystal planes are like this. So, angle is going to be this angle. This formula can also be derived classically. However, it is interesting to look at it from the wave perspective. So, these are the experiments that actually confirm the wave nature. I have given you the classic Davis and Germer experiment, I have talked about double slit experiment that is actually a wave interference phenomena and I have also talked about Kapitza Dirac proposal which has been performed with high intensity lasers. So, these are the ways the experimental confirmation of lambda de Broglie for electron can be checked. Now, you must be wondering so far how come I am talking about electrons why talking about diffraction of electrons. This is because lambda electron 
which is h over m electron times v is much larger than heavier particles and larger the wavelength easier it is to see the diffraction or interference and therefore one works with electrons. Other thing which I would wish to point out is that when we looked at electron diffraction from a crystal, it is the wave associated with each electron that interferes with itself. So, the wave associated with a single electron interferes with itself. So, it is not that an electron interferes with another electron, it is wave associated with each single electron that interferes with itself. Similarly, when I talk about double diffraction, double slit experiment with electrons, each electron's wave interferes with itself. It is as if the electron is interfering with itself. If that makes you little uneasy, only thing I can say is welcome to the world of quantum mechanics, this is how things work out. I have deliberately not derived the formula for Young's double slit experiment because that you know well from your uh, 12th grade physics except that now when we work with electron interference, the wavelength is that of electron waves. So, this is this concludes the introduction to matter waves to you. It tells you how the wavelength associated with the waves with the particle is given in terms of its momentum and how it is experimentally verified. From next lecture onwards, we will develop a wave equation known as the Schrodinger equation for these particles in terms of de Broglie waves and start working with it. That will be the Schrodinger's version of quantum mechanics.